Good evening, fourth graders. So we have learned how to do division pretty well with the partial quotients method. And a lot of times we end up with remainders when we divide. So today's mini lesson is called, what am I supposed to do with these remainders? Remainders are really easy to deal with when you're just dividing numbers. But when you have a real situation, uh, remainders takes a lot of thinking to decide what to do with. So title this your next page. And when you have done so, close your notebook and really think. Today's more of a thinking day than a math day, as you'll see. So once you're ready to really concentrate and think, close up your notebook and rejoin me. Okay, so first, let's do a little division just to remind ourselves how it works. So let's take a question like this. A baseball team has nine people on a team. A <clears throat> hundred people sign up to play. How many teams can we make? So I need to take this hundred people that signed up to play baseball, and I need to divide them into groups of nine. So I'm going to do a hundred divided by nine. So I can, it's going to be a quick one, I can do ten groups of nine and get ninety. That's ninety of my players. We'll make ten teams. Looks like I can do one more group of nine. And I'm left with one left over. So 100 divided by 9, I made 11 groups of 9. And I had a remainder of 1. That's it. So, there's my answer, right? 11 remainder 1. Well, not really. Because if I was just dividing 100 by 9, uh, yeah, it would be just to say 11 remainder 1. But remember, I was solving an actual problem here. I was talking about people who signed up to play baseball and making baseball teams. And so it's kind of weird to say, well, I need 11 remainder 1 teams. What does that mean? You can't have 11 remainder 1 teams. So what I have to do in a real situation, I have to figure out what to do with this remainder. I can make 11 teams, and I have to think about this remainder guy. So there's three possibilities here when you have a remainder in a real problem. And we're going to talk through each possibility. But the first thing to do is to understand what this even means. 11 remainder 1 teams means I can make 11 teams with, of 9. Remember I was doing 9 people per team. So I made 11 groups of 9. And I have this one person left over who's not on a team. So that's what the remainder means in this situation. It's not an extra team, it's an extra person who doesn't fit into a group of nine. We made groups of nine. So let's talk about our three possibilities. And in different situations, some of the possibilities make sense, and some of the possibilities don't make sense, and it changes depending on all your situations. So these are the three possibilities, and we're going to see which one works. So my first option is to make an extra incomplete group. So in this case, here's what that would mean. It would mean I would make 11 teams of 9. And since I don't have enough people left for a 12th team of 9, I'm going to make one extra team, one extra group of 1. Um, and so that's how I'm going to make an extra group, one extra group, that's not complete. Instead of 9 people, it just has my one remainder person. So in this situation, I would say that does not make sense. I can't really have a baseball team that only has one person on it. In other situations, this option will make sense. But here, it just really doesn't make any sense to have a baseball team with one person. So in this situation, option one is not really doesn't really work. Let's try option two. Option two I call leave it out. So instead of making an extra group and it's just not full, Option two with your remainder in a real situation is just leave it out. So in that case, this would mean I have 11 teams of 9. And I have one person who just can't doesn't get to play. One person's just left out. He can't join a team because I ran out of teams. This is not a really nice possibility for whoever this one person is. But it does make sense. I mean, it is definitely a thing I can do is just say, look, we had too many people sign up for baseball. We could make 11 teams, but we didn't have room um, for you on one of those teams. Somebody just has to not play. So while I don't like this situation if I'm this person, 
it does make sense. It is a, definitely an option that I could do. It's better than having one person play baseball by himself. Okay? So that's option two. So option one, make an extra incomplete group. Option two, leave it out. Option three with the remainder is make some of the groups a little bigger. Here's what I would do in this case. I would still have my 11 teams of nine. I would make my 11 groups of nine. And I would say this, one, I have one person left over, so I'm going to say one team gets a tenth player. And they just have to have somebody resting uh, whenever they're playing. And so this way, everybody gets to play, and one team just has one extra guy. Again, that would kind of work in this situation, too. Um, it might be a little unfair for the teams that don't get one, but it is an option that, like, it does make sense in this situation, unlike the first one where we would say, well, one person just doesn't play. Or one person plays by himself. That wouldn't make any sense. So that's option one, two, and three. Let's do another one and think of these again. I know one's kind of not enough probably to get your mind on this. I'm going to consider the same three options, but I'm going to have, like, a, a different situation. So let's do this one. So a warehouse can put, and this is still an I do, so just think and follow along with me. So a warehouse puts packages of paper into boxes. A box can hold eight packages of paper, and they have 820 packages. How many boxes will they need? So I need to take these 820 packs of paper, and I need to divide them into groups of eight because eight fit in a box. All right? I'm going to be able to do my math pretty fast on this. I see an eight, and I see an 800. So that tells me right away I need 100 groups of eight. And that almost solved my whole problem, which is nice. Drops me down to 20. And it looks like I can do two more groups. And then I'm down to my remainder of four. So I have 102 groups of eight with four left over. So the problem is, in a real situation, I can't just leave my answer like this. This isn't just a math problem. This is a real situation we're dealing with. So I cannot say I need 102 remainder four boxes. Remainders make sense only when you're doing the math part. They don't make sense in a real problem. So what my answer really is here is I need 102 boxes of eight and I have four packages left over that don't fit into a box. So I need 102 boxes. They're each going to have eight packs in it. And then I've got these other four packages that I, I don't know what to do with. So let's consider the same three options we considered last time. And let's see which ones make sense this time. So my first option is to make an extra incomplete group. In this situation, that would mean I have 102 full boxes of eight. And then I have one more box with only four packages in it. So it's just not full. It's an extra unfull box. So I would really end up then with 103 boxes. And one of them is not full. That makes sense in this situation. That is definitely a possibility I could do. I just have a box that's not full. That's no problem. Option two, leave it out. If I just leave the remainder out, that means I have 102 boxes full of paper, and I have four packages that I just don't send, or I just, you know, I just keep them and wait till I maybe uh, till I have more paper or something for the next shipment. I think that makes sense too. So it's going to be four packages that I just keep. I think that makes sense too. I just send 102 boxes and I just don't worry about the other four. That makes sense in this situation too. Option three, make some of the groups a little bigger. So remember with our baseball team, that meant we just put the other guy, uh, we squeezed him on a team that had an extra person. So in this case, I would have 102 boxes of eight, and then four boxes, because I have four left over, four boxes would get a ninth package. That's how that option would work here. Now in this situation, that is not 
an okay option because it even says a box, a box can only hold eight packages. So I can't just squeeze another package in the box. It won't fit. That did kind of work for the baseball team idea. This is just a different idea. It doesn't work. So that's my two options, my three options. Um, have one box that's not full. Just keep four of the packages and don't send them. Or try to squeeze a ninth box, a ninth package into the box, which would not work. So I can do either one of these in this situation. Let's do one together. Open up your math notebook. Pause and write down the situation and do your division. And after you've done your division, unpause and we'll think through the options together. All right, so I paused and I did my division two. And here's what I came up with. I came up with, and check your work, I came up with 22 remainder four, 202 chairs divided equally at nine tables. Sorry, that would be 22 remainder four chairs at each table. So the, or what that means is 22 at each table and four left over. Check your math. Hopefully you got what I did. So what's interesting here is not to do the math. It's to figure out what do I do with those four leftover chairs. Let's think through our three options and let's see which ones make sense in this situation. So option one, make an extra incomplete group. So that would mean um, I put 22 chairs at each table and then I set up an extra table with just four chairs. And I think that would probably be okay in this situation, right? I, I would, you know, it would mean I would have to have another table, a tenth table, but it would be okay. I think that kind of makes sense. Just set up one more table with a few chairs at it. Uh, next one, leave it out. So that would mean I just do 22 chairs at each table. And then the last four chairs I don't set up. I just kind of put them away. So that, I don't know if that makes sense or not. It kind of depends. If, if I have 200, and, if I'm putting out 202 chairs because I need them for 202 people, this is not an option. Because if I do that, I'm not going to have four of the chairs. If I'm just trying to set it up to make them equal and to look nice, it would be okay. So in this situation, it doesn't say I have 202 people. It says I have 202 chairs. So I'm going to say this one's okay here. I'm just going to put those four chairs away and say it's okay. If, it, if I knew I needed exactly that many chairs, this would not be an okay option. But I don't really know that. Okay. And option three, make some of the groups a little bigger. So that means I'm going to put 22 chairs at each table. And then I'm going to squeeze one extra chair at four of the tables. And again, that kind of depends on the situation. I'm going to say that's probably okay. If I can fit 22 chairs at a table, I can probably fit 23 chairs at a table and just make it a little extra squeezed in. So I think in this situation, all of them kind of make sense um, unless we had some other information that said it did. <laughs> so that's your three options with a remainder in a real problem. Make an extra group that's just not full. Uh, leave them out. Just exclude them from the situation. Or make some of the groups a little bigger. Once you feel like you understand these options and you have done a good job um, writing them out in your notes and explaining them to yourself, you are done and I will see you tomorrow.